everyone, this is Jody, and today I'm going to show you how to make my mini movie box. You'll be starting with a piece of cardstock cut to 8.5 by 10.5. Then you're going to score each side at 1 and a quarter by 2 and 3 quarters. You can see I use my score pal for this. I find it much easier than moving my paper within a paper trimmer and using the scoring blade. It's nice and easy. It's got a large platform base. and I can knock out all eight of these score lines relatively quickly. Let's just finish up the last one here. The next step is going to be to cut along some of the score lines so that we can assemble the box. You can kind of see them in the shot here. I'm going to cut along each of the score lines on opposing sides all the way up until that top score line. So you'll need to make four cuts on each side. You'll see here I'm cutting the second one. Now I'm going to cut off one flap there. I'm going to start with just the corner. And then I'm going to cut off the other flap, leaving kind of a stair step formation. On the tiny flaps, I cut out a little notch. This helps you to assemble your box easier. All right, let me show you and fast forward the other four corners. Each of the four corners is exactly the same, so it's really easy. All right, now that we have that all done, I'm going to fold along every score line to kind of put the box um, in shape. It's easier if you do this before you add your adhesive. All right, now that that's all done, I'm just going to add adhesive to the strips, as you can see here. Always use a strong adhesive for this because anything that's 3D, it's going to tend to want to tug apart. I never use liquid glue on 3D items because it warps my boxes and things like that. All right, once you have the adhesive all on, just remove all the liners. My first step on the longer sides is just to fold the flap over and then pull the sides in and use the flap to kind of cover the side flaps, just like I'm doing here. That way the inside of your box is going to look nice and finished. Now we're going to work on the side bumper for inside the box. I like it for a more realistic look. You're going to cut your paper to 2 and 15 sixteenths by 3 and 3 quarters and then score at 1 quarter, 1 and 3 quarters, 2 and 3 and a half, which I'm doing right now. This is going to be an open at the ends type of box. I just want to make it in a box formation so I can place it right there in that box. I'm just folding it together, putting one piece of adhesive on the end, and then I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to stick it to the inside of my box. It just fits right in there and shove it up against the side. Nice and easy. Okay, next up we're gonna make the cup and candy box insert. You're gonna cut your paper to six by six and score it one inch, two and a half inches, four and a half inches, and then you'll turn your paper and cut, uh, score, excuse me, at one and a half inches and four and a half inches. The assembly for this box is very similar to the base of the box. We're going to once again cut along some score lines, cut out some notches, so you can just see me doing that here. Again, I'm just cutting the score lines on the opposing sides. I'm going to cut out only two corners this time make my notch cuts so that the box comes together easy and more professionally. This is what it's going to look like when you're done. Now I want to make the cup 
cutout and the little candy box cutout. And I'm going to use some Spellbinders dies for those. I ran over to my Vagabond and cut them out so you can see now what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to fold along the score lines again. It just gives your box the memory that it needs to be less, uh, less of a pain when you're adding your adhesive and things. Okay, and now just add the adhesive where I do. All right, just remove the liners. And I grabbed my paper piercer mat because if I'm turning it over and it already has adhesive on it, I don't want it to stick to any paper. I'm just assembling it into a box. You notice I have one flap. That's because I want to make sure that that one portion of the box is closed off to the popcorn box opening. I was about to put it in and then I remembered that I needed some adhesive on the side. So I'm just adding two adhesive dots real quick and then placing it in the box very carefully. And this is opposite of the side where the bumper is. Press down your adhesive, make sure it's in there nice and securely. All right, and you can see we're almost there. All right, next up, we're going to make the candy box. We're going to cut the paper to four inches by four inches, score it one half inch, one three quarter inches, two and a quarter inch, then turn your paper and score it one half and three and a half. And just like the other pieces we've worked on before, we're going to cut along score lines on opposing sides. Just continue doing that. You're going to cut off two opposing corners and notch cut the flaps. Here I'm folding it to get it ready for the adhesive. Put on the adhesive, put it on two flaps as well. That's going to close the top and bottom. Remove the liners, assemble the box. And when you're, when you're assembling, leave one side open so that you can add your goodie in there. You can use, you know, real candy. I filled mine with real candy. You could put in any sort of treat you wanted to and then it'll sit right in the candy slot of the box like that. And there's the naked one and then the completed one. Of course, we have one piece to go, and that is to make some felt popcorn. I was super excited about this and I had a really clear vision in my head of what it would look like. It came out really close to what I was wanting. So when I first started these, I used candy, but then the candy got furry from the felt, so I went buttons. And I put buttons in the felt scallop cutout. I used the first place award ribbon dynamics. I wrapped three, two to three small buttons in the felt. And then I bunched it up and used some Stampin' Up! linen thread to tie a knot. And I just trimmed off the edges. And you'll want to use a strong string for this. First I tried some twine and it snapped when I was trying to pull the knot closed. So you can see I did in yellow and white to give it a more realistic popcorn look. I'm just speeding it up here to show you one more time how to make it using the white felt. See, aren't those cute? I made a whole bunch of popcorn. It took more than I kind of expected to fill the box. And you can see I did a nice mix of the yellow and white. And I use the felt from my favorite things. It's a nice wool blend felt, and I totally recommend it. So there's my little overflowing box of popcorn. Here's some of my finishing touches. I decorated the candy box after filling it. 
and I covered all four sides with some red cardstock to give it a little pizzazz. The At The Movies Dynamics and Stamp Set can be found at mftstamps.com. Thank you.